what you're left with now after you've nailed all the way around is you've probably got some little blobs of our wood glue sort of coming through that's absolutely fine what we can do i'll come along with an old paintbrush a nice bit of water right just simple water nothing else and we can literally just sort of start brushing up and cleaning up the glue and what we're doing here we're literally sort of um basically thinning down our white glue and because we're thinning it down that then sort of gives it a capillary action to actually suck in to between the gaps between the two pieces of plank which then gives us a better seal as well as cleaning it up right and not only that i mean i haven't really got much going on at the tops here but at the tops here you also want to sort of wipe these down clean these up right because um you know you get a little blob here of uh, wood glue it will leave it will raise it so then when we come along to put say our next plank on top it's just going to sort of bulge it out a bit going on there so you know cleaning this cleaning it is um, a stage you do want to um, take care of all right so let's just finish this up right and hopefully as you can see we've got ourselves that little bit of a gap going on with the um, the formers here all right and that's where we're going to be putting our plank 12 you know just coming up there just that little little bit all right so that's all now clean now and really um come tomorrow um, well depending on what sort of wood glue you use uh, the wood glue I'm using is quite a fast drying wood glue so you know tomorrow can come along and pop these nails out um, and that's all good to go um, and a lot of you have been saying like the front of your um, that the front part is sort of like really looking sort of nasty um, and really having lots of gaps and ripples and bumps and steps and everything um, you know I get that as well and you know you don't have to worry about it too much let's try and sort of get you on a better angle but um, you know we've got all sorts of sort of bulges here and there when coming around you know that's absolutely fine because you know what we're going to be sanding the absolute hell out of this to an absolute sort of nice smooth finish all right so don't worry You'll probably see this side a little bit better maybe yeah there we go yeah, as you can see loads of sort of steps going on there nothing to worry about we will sand the hell, hell out of this and um, get it all nice and smooth so don't worry too much about it don't worry too much about getting um, your stuff bent perfectly to the shape and everything I mean you want to get it to a certain degree but really you don't need to go um, mega obsessive because as I say the sanding we're going to do on this will just sort this all out just want to step back into the um, HMS Victory launch just to sort of finalize this and finish this up. Um, little problem, I mean, it's not a big problem, but um, you may have this on some of your pieces. Basically, what it is is um, we've got like, the numbers on the different pieces of wood, which helps us put it together. But that's actually going to be seen. Um, so what we want to do with this, and the reason why it's going to be seen is because this is actually um, a recessed in there. So when we spray it, we're going to end up with a 21 on there. Um, nice, simple, and easy to do. A uh, bit of green putty. You know, we can just open this up, and we just want to get out our applicator. So with this um, spatula I have here, which I use for pretty much all this stuff, we can squeeze out a little bit of our um, green pudding, and it's as easy as just let's just spread this on, right? And you just want to work it into that recessed uh, twenty-one there. Work it in, push it in. Right, and then I like to just sort of leave a, a bit on top for us to sand away just to make sure we don't get any nasty shrinkage. And there we go, that's all covered up. Um, this stuff does really kind of need 24 hours to dry before you sand it and spray it. Um, next up as well is, 
And by the way, when you do any cleaning with this green putty, cellulose thinners is really the stuff you want to be using. So let's just open this up. Okay, it's a kitchen paper towel. Good old kitchen paper towel. We can dip into the cellulose and this stuff just, it just comes off virtually instantly. Right, and to get it off myself as well. Right, uh, moving along, we also have um, this rope that they want us to do as well. Uh, now in the instructions, oh, they make it look so much more easy than it actually is. Um, yes, let's get some um, masking tape. Right, I do believe this is from Hobby Models in Greece. Their own little brand they do. It's very much like Tamiya, um, Tamiya masking tape, but uh, it's cheaper. All right, and what we want to do here, we want to get our um, bit of string that we get with this. We want to sort of basically turn this into rope. All right, not too close. There we go. Um, a bit of advice, you know, get yourself a um, little hand drill, but put a pin in there. And we want to get this started, right? And we're using the pin to actually get it started, right? As I say in the instructions, they don't show you how hard it is actually to get this going. All right, and what we want to do, we want to, now we've sort of got that center bit, so sort of, sort of stuck down a little bit. Want to wrap around our first piece, all right? And then we want to hold it down again. Right, right at the point where it starts, hold it down again, um, just to sort of hold the position, and then we want to sort of pull on the string, right, and then we want to use the pin now to sort of manipulate where we get the string to go. Right, it is quite delicate and you you don't want to be pulling this really hard or anything like that because it's uh, just going to rip up and then we want to sort of wrap around again nice and loosely right and then using the pin again to hold into place the string that you've already manipulated into looking like rope right and then as you can see you just got to sort of play with it and get it to sort of just go around and as you go around, you want to be sort of just lightly pressing down the string into this sort of circular rolled up bit of rope. Right. And then when you're ready to do another round, again, wrap it around loosely. And then hold into place and pull the string and then sort of manipulate it into shape. Right. And you want to do that all the way around till I do believe it gets to about um, I think 17 mil um, across. With that all wrapped around there, what you want to do is just to make sure it's um, sticking down, we can get one of our metal ruler here and just sort of really sort of push it down right really sort of get it to stick down and not have any bits sort of um, bumping up now what we're going to do now is we're going to have this glued into place so coming in with your wood glue that we've been using right we can just basically get a bit on there hold on it always dries up on the end just peel that off a bit All right let's get a blob just on here Right, and it's neat, right? And we just wanna just paint this all on. Cause this is gonna be the side that we're not gonna see, that we're gonna be um, basically gluing down onto our launch. So this is gonna be the side that holds it all together and glues it all nicely, right? You want it to be sort of relatively thick because you don't want this to sort of soak in and go down to where the um, masking tape is because it's going to leave that sort of gluey sort of lucky mark to it on the other side. We want to 
basically just keep this on this side um, we'll, we'll peel it off and show you later um, leave a nice bit sort of dangling off I think it is something like um, four centimeters or something I'll just cut a sort of big piece off and we'll trim it trim it down later and we'll come back to that as well later Right, while well, we've got a few things drying, I've um, got some oars here and um, they've got a bit of a seam line along them. So I'm just getting out a, a, a fine sanding stick here. It's a, a spongy one as well. So it can go to the curvature here because I mean, these oars are you know, supposed to be nice and round. And all we need to do is just give them that little bit of a sanding. Um, the, I know this is metal, but it's like probably white metal, which is rather easy to sand really and you just want to get rid of those um, bits of flash that are on here um, because it is going to look a little bit naff when we actually come around to painting it right and also you know we've got our sides here which are a bit more tricky and um, it is rather thin and it is going to be kind of easy to accidentally bend these so you really when you're sanding um, you don't want to be putting any weight on it at all really you want to just sort of let the sanding stick do all the work right but most likely you're going to end up putting a bit of a bend into it here and there all right, so let's just do this side as well. We've got a bit of a lump actually just there. So you may want to come along uh, and get a, a sort of harder sanding stick with a bit more of a, maybe a medium of grit. All right, because there is a bit of a lump just there, which takes care of that a lot easier. Remember, just let the weight of the sanding stick do the, do, do the work right because if you start pushing down on this you're going to bend them like mad right, so that's looking a little bit better probably could do a bit more of a tidy up but just to speed things up a little bit more um i've got this uh, t-square here and i've also got a metal ruler you know kind of use your own ingenuity and sort of find something that's too hard flat surfaces and to put any kind of bends out and put this all back straight right is we can just easily come along and roll our two hard whatever it is you find two hard pieces and you just roll them up and down like so and that should sort of like get you all nice and straight again um, so that's a nice bit of prep work there and while we're sort of on sanding i'm just going to get out a couple of skinny sticks oops can have a couple of skinny sticks here and what we're going to do we're um, going to sand these out sand this set now remember the 21 um, when it comes to stuff like this um i like to start off nice coarse skinny stick right and what we can do is we just lightly sand this right we're kind of just letting a light bit of weight just sand back not the wood but we're just sanding back the green putty right then i'm going to turn it over because you've got the advantage of um you know being a medium grit on the opposite side and this is where we can start um, if need be, start sanding into the wood a little bit. All right, and then we can sort of move to a finer grit to hopefully finish this off. All right, and what you should hopefully see is as you've sanded that away, we're seeing that 21 again, um, but we're seeing that the 21 is green and it's basically filled that in. Um, next thing is, you know, you're going to want to paint this up as we've done with the rest of the launch if you do find that after say putting the primer down you can still slightly see the, the 21 add another application of green putty sand and um, check it again with some paint and that should be all good 
Well, as you can see, I have um, sprayed up our first coat of white on our oars. I'm using some locking tweezers here. I mean, in the instructions it says a cork, but I mean, really, it's better to go ahead and get these locking tweezers. Um, they do do a better job. Um, and then we can mask them up and spray our oars. The okra yellow, um, which coming on to a bit of masking. All right, I'm just getting some of our tamiya masking tape 10 mil and just at the end here we want to spray um, the end of our mast here um, white and what we simply want to do is just roll this around like so keeping the other end nice and taut and it literally is as easy as that nicely wrapped around and then you could um, go off get some sort of like the bigger masking tape Right, where we can just quickly and easily wrap this around just to sort of make sure we're not going to get any overspray. Um, I did off camera just to kind of show you what I did. I did just um, get some of Citadel's, um, one of their shades, their Agrax Earth shade, and I just um, basically just painted that on and it does give you a really sort of nice dark sort of oaky wood type look to that um, so getting a bit of white now using our airbrush using Vallejo's um, 001 model air we can just pour and spray with this stuff because it's only a little bit um, you may want to put a kitchen paper towel down just to sort of keep your, your surface sort of stained at least a bit sort of should we say cleanish Right, and what we want to do then, check, make sure we're flowing nicely, and it's just an easy case of let's just carefully spray the end off. Now, when we've masked up, the one thing you want to be sort of careful of is spraying too thickly. If we spray a big blast and blast out a load of paint on this, it may go, it'll go down wet, and if it goes down wet, it will bleed underneath the masking tape. So what we want to be doing is just putting on simple light coats, right? And then cutting to air, drying it off, right? We don't want it to be going down um, too wet. As I say, it will bleed. All right, so coming back with another coat just on top and then cutting to air to dry that off. Um, and that should be look good when that is dry. Now that our coiled up rope um, has dried the PVA glue on this side, we want to then just very carefully sort of peel it up off of our, ooh, not too much, there we go, want to peel it up off our masking tape. And it isn't a case of peeling up and pulling off, because I mean you might tear it a bit, but almost there. And hopefully, as you can see just here now, we get this really cool bit of coiled up rope, which if I just bring it in, which we can just put in just inside here um, and glue that in there, which will look rather, rather cool. So there's our launch basically finished. Um, all I've done really is I've just made sure I've given a gloss coat to basically everything because well, for a start, I've not really sort of decided on the weathering side of things. And when it comes to weathering, you know, it's always good to sort of seal it in with a gloss coat. Um, we can mattify it, satinify it or whatever later on down the road. But really, I mean, this is a, a long build, the HMS Victory. Uh, the magazines last for like two years. So um, this really is just going to sort of probably go and show in my glass cabinet for potentially a year before I touch it again. So having a gloss coat on there actually does kind of protect it um, from whatever elements and whatnot. So um, I do recommend doing that. So now what we want to do is put this away. <laughs> Thank you. 